Hi there friends. Just real quick, I want to show you. I have my city covered up here for privacy, but um, the current temperature right now is 7 degrees outside. Yep, a whopping 7. I did the conversion and that's about negative 14 Celsius. <laughs> it's very cold. Not a very nice day today. Um, and that's the warmest it's supposed to get all day. Um, but, I would like you to notice... My greenhouse heater is heating. It doesn't really matter what the temperature is outside. As long as the sun is shining, you have greenhouse heat. I'd like to show you. Ooh, sorry for all the sun. Look at that. It's over 90 in here. So it is more than capable of heating our house. So I just wanted to show you that the greenhouse heater does in fact work even in the dead of winter. Okay friends, now it's been several, um, maybe probably a couple weeks now, and now it is actually fairly unseasonably warm. It is 41 degrees out right now, and it's about noon. You know, see that? 12 o'clock. Anyway, um, even for it being 41 degrees, which is way warmer than it was earlier in the month of December here, and it's late December now, it is still very warm in the greenhouse. It is up about a hundred degrees and I don't know if you can hear the fan in my background here um, but it's definitely venting and still heating our house so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the construction and why it is that it really doesn't matter what the temperature is outside either way the greenhouse stays warm enough to heat our house so I'll go show you the outside and that right now okay so here's the greenhouse from the outside uh, please excuse my mess but uh, it has a really really basic um, you know, way to build it. The whole thing is basically put, I don't know if you can hear over here, it's a little bit easier to see. It's just a basic concrete, um, you know, footing on the bottom, and then you put a board on top of that and bolt it to the concrete, and then the panels and everything just sit on top of that. Um, you don't really use any kind of a special frame. I just use some regular 2x4s for the frame. Um, they don't use 16 on centers or anything like that like you would with a wall. You only put them behind where the panels come together. So there's one right here, and then I think these are four feet wide panels. So there's another one over there, and so on. Another one over here for the corner. It's actually a four by four, but the rest of it is all built with just two by fours, including the roof, which you can't obviously probably see very well, but that has two by fours as well. Um, let's see. It does require some special screws to hold the panels in. These are supposed to help keep the water out. They have a rubber washer, where the washer is rubber on the inside and then metal on the outside for stability. And the rubber on the inside actually helps to keep the water out. Um, unfortunately, I do have a little condensation in there right now because it snowed recently. And we didn't tape the bottom of the panels correctly, so... Um, you're supposed to tape the bottoms and the tops of the panels with just some HVAC tape, that, that metal tape that you use for, like, heating and air conditioning type stuff. Um, other than that, it's really basic. The same panels that you use for the walls are the same ones that you use for the ceiling um, on the roof of the greenhouse. And uh, I'll talk to you a little bit about the panels and what they look like in a second. Um, but it's a really basic way to build it. Just really simple. It doesn't take a whole lot of skills. You know, just the concrete, a basic 2x4 frame, and then the panel screwed to it. So let me go ahead and talk to you about the panels inside here in a second. Hello again, friends. Okay, so just to the wrap up the rest of the, um, you know, the talking about the greenhouse build itself, the reason why the temperature inside the greenhouse is so high, no matter what the temperature is outside, is because of the actual panels themselves. I actually have two greenhouses, um, a big one outside that's detached from the house. That's actually a Harbor Freight greenhouse. And then I have this smaller one um, that was built basically from scratch with some panels that I got from a reclaimed building supply store. Uh, the panels are very different from each other, and that's actually what makes the difference as to the temperature and why it is that it's so um, different. So here is a panel from the Harbor Freight Greenhouse. The panel is about the sixteenth of an inch, it's very thin, and there's only two levels. There's two layers to it. Um, it does insulate much better than a single layer panel would, um, but a still, two layers isn't quite enough to really buffer from the outside temperature that much. So this Harbor Freight greenhouse, with these types of panels, 
won't get anywhere near as warm if it's really cold outside because the, te the temperature here is kind of weird um, in that sometimes it'll be really cold as you saw in the video earlier really cold but the sun is still shining um, kind of gives you this illusion that it's warm even though it's really not <laughs> so anyway when the temperature inside of this greenhouse goes up the temperature um, inside of the greenhouse I'm actually in right now goes way up and here's why that panel is from the Harbor Freight greenhouse here are the panels from the reclaimed building supply store that I made this greenhouse out of. It is actually five layers, which creates four spaces, and it's about uh, an inch thick. It's really, really big. It's really heavy duty and really tough. Um, the outside and the inside layers are really, really thick, and then the inside layers are much thinner. It's more like a piece of paper or something. But the reason they make these with all these different layers is so that they can buffer from the outside. It's kind of like insulation. When you have insulation in your house, it kind of keeps the temperature inside the temperature you want it to be, and the outside, no matter what it is, whether it's really cold in your house you want it to be warm, or vice versa, and you want your house to be cooler because it's really hot outside, the insulation keeps that temperature um, what you want it to be. Well, in the same way, this, this panel is extremely dirty because after I finished building the greenhouse, I just kind of set it aside. Now it's been decorating my yard for several years, so it's very, very dirty. Um, but usually it would be clear, like they are, as you saw in the um, other video. And so it lets all the sun shine through, but it doesn't um, let the heat back out. So the heat builds up in here, and no matter what temperature is out there, because of all these layers, um, it works like insulation would in your house. So um, that's why it is that it works so well. If you wanted to build a greenhouse like this, I would highly recommend getting the, um, the really thick panels. While I do think a Harbor Freight greenhouse would definitely work as well, and it would probably work really well for a place, um, somebody who lives in, say, an area where it doesn't get quite so cold in the winter time, um, but we get temperatures really low here, maybe as low as like, you know, 20 below zero, so, and that's Fahrenheit, so that's really cold in Celsius. Um, anyway, so if you have uh, a more moderate climate, then something like, you know, the small panel would work fine. Whereas if you live somewhere really cold, I would definitely opt with the thicker panels. And for cost reasons, a lot of people will choose to maybe do thicker panels for the roof because obviously heat rises. So you can use thicker panels for the roof and maybe some thinner ones for the walls. I've seen that done many, many times actually. Um, the walls will be like, say, three layers, um, which creates two spaces. And then the, the ceiling will have, say, these with the five layers, which creates the four spaces. So, um, or you could just do the whole thing in one type of panel, which is what I did, because these panels, I'll admit, they are extremely expensive. They are very, very, very expensive. Um, so I was really blessed to find them at the building reclaim, reclaim, reclaimed building supply store, excuse me, where they were so much cheaper. So, um, but they're really strong. They also market them as hurricane panels um, for people to screw onto the tops of their windows so that they can still get lots of sunlight through on like boards, you know, and you just screw some plywood to your house, it would obviously make it very dark. The um, polycarbonate greenhouse panels like these make it so the sunlight can still come through, but it's also very strong. And unfortunately, the way that my house is set up, we've had the ability to test that out. Um, right above this greenhouse is the second story to my house, and so the roof is pitched this way with the greenhouse underneath it. And so when the sun, when it snows or something like that, the snow will build up on the roof, and then, then you know, a few days later or whatever, the sun will come out and melt the snow. It'll slide off the roof and come crashing right onto the roof of my greenhouse, which is really unpleasant. <laughs> It doesn't hurt it, it's never done anything, you know, to damage it in any way, it's just really loud. So, uh, it would have been better if my roof was pitched this way so the snow would come off this way and not hurt the greenhouse on the side, but whatever. Well, it doesn't hurt it anyway, it just doesn't make you jump to the roof when you're trying to water. It is so loud, but it never, you know, again, I've checked it out, there's no damage to any of the panels, and any of, none of them have ever gotten hurt from it, so. Uh, big old icicles, huge chunks of ice, all that stuff has just come slamming into it, so they are, I can contest, very strong. 
And so the other question I've been getting, in addition to the ones about the actual um, construction of the greenhouse, which I hopefully answered your questions with, but if not, of course, continue to ask. I'll be happy to answer them. Is the actual amount that this um, heating your house with the greenhouse can save? Um, so I went ahead and I did some number crunching um, for how much the bills that we have now compare to how much they were before we had our greenhouse. And I even saved some of them to show you. So the month of September, our bill was, and I saved it, but I lost it. So this is the only one I lost. Our bill is $20.02. Usually September is the month when we would start heating our house with our furnace, but because the sun is so intense in the sky, it hasn't gone down too much yet. The greenhouse heats the, um, our house, our whole house, exclusively. We don't have to use our furnace at all. I think I mentioned that in the other video. Um, so instead of our bill having gone from $20, which is what it is in the summertime also, that's basically the base price, that's the lowest our bill ever gets. Um, it stays $20 instead of having jumped up to $40, which is what it would have been. Then during the month of October, again, the sun is so intense in, in the sky, our bill only went up by $1. It went up to $21.02, whereas our bill normally would be $50. Um, so there was a $30 savings for that month. If you want to see, let's go right there. $21 for the month of October. The next one would be my month of November. Our bill was $46.52. Our bill would normally be about $80. So for this month, we had about a $35 savings. And then for the month of December, which is the bill I just got, um, $60.65. Whereas our bill would normally be about $100. So there was a $40 savings for that month. Now looking through my bank records, Last year, or January, was um, the heaviest month um, as far as heating the house goes because during the month of December and January, of course, um, near the summer solstice just before and just after it, the sun is really low in the sky. We're just north of the 40 degree line here, um, 40 degrees north of the equator. And so in the winter time, the sun does go fairly low in the horizon. So it comes up fairly late in the day, it goes down very early in the day, and the sun never really gets too intense um, because it does stay really low. Whereas in the summertime, obviously, it comes up really early, it goes down really late, and then it's really high in the sky all day. So because the sun is what's actually being used to heat the house, those two months are the hardest months, December and January, to actually heat the house with the greenhouse. So that's why there's... Um, you know, we have to use a fair amount of our furnace during those times to heat the house. So um, January, our bill last year was $80, whereas before we had the greenhouse, it was $120 for another savings of $40. And now after that, because January is kind of the peak time when it costs the most, the savings is the same as just December, but um, we have to pay the most. Everything after that is a mirror um, image. So um, basically, The month of February is basically the same price as December and the same amount of savings. The month of March is the same as November, again, with the same uh, pricing uh, for our, how much we pay and the savings and so on. So I added all this up. I hope this isn't too much information or I'm not boring to any of you too much. But I added it all up, how much we actually pay, how much um, the bills used to be, and kind of like um, determined how much that this greenhouse actually saves us every single month, actually comparing how much we used to pay to how much we actually pay now, you know, and of course it's going to vary a little bit, but with, uh, you know, the months of May and September having $20 savings, October and April being $30, March and November being about $35, and then January, or December, January, and February all being $40 a month that we would save, that adds up to a whopping $290 this greenhouse saves us every single year. That is huge. Not only huge because that's a lot of money, because when you actually consider how much this thing costs to make, not only do you get your money back fairly quickly, but after that you start saving, you know? Um, but also, as far as a lot of other things, you know, the independence that we have from this, it helps to lessen our dependence on the grid, so to speak, or, um, you know, on all the different types of 
um, materials that are used to heat the house. We use a furnace that is run with natural gas, and so not only do we have to uh, depend less on that natural gas, but it also has a lot of um, less environmental impacts that we don't have to have. How much less do we really have to, do they have to drill to get it, which oftentimes they have to use um, a process called fracking, which is terrible for the environment. Uh, hydraulic fracturing, where they drill, and inject all these chemicals into the ground, it's terrible, it's terrible for the environment. Anyway, not only is that environmental impact lessened um, when it, they're drilling for it, but also when it's burnt, because it doesn't, um, the greenhouse doesn't obviously make any kind of byproducts like the natural gas would. You know, natural gas makes all kinds of you know, carbon monoxide and other type, types of, you know, things people consider greenhouse gases and so on. So the $290, it's a lot, it really is. And if every household, I know that's an unrealistic you know, expectation, I don't expect that, but the people who would be able to you know, um, utilize this, which pretty much anyone who lives anywhere, except for the people who have you know, the least amount of sunny days, if you have at least half of the time where the sun is shining, you'll be able to do this because it really, like I said in the first video, depends on the sun. That's why um, we have to use more of the furnace in the winter time because uh, the sun keeps getting less and less intense in the sky. So, in a, you know, we're not able to heat it as well with it in the, in the darker months of the year. But anyway, unless you live somewhere like Seattle, Washington, or you know, somewhere in the UK where it rains a lot, where a lot of the time it just, um, you know, it's overcast. If you live in an area where it's sunny at least half the time, this is absolutely something that you can utilize. Um, so, um, I hope this was helpful and I hope I was able to answer everybody's questions. If I didn't, of course, feel free to keep asking them. I would be more than happy to um, continue answering them because I really do believe in this. If I would have known how much money this would have saved me, not even just with the heat, but you know, there. If you've been following my other videos about what the greenhouse is like throughout the different um, seasons of the year, with it being, you know, um, an off-grid, you know, dehydrator where I can dehydrate all kinds of stuff in here in summertime, or how it can keep, you know, using it to produce food for us to eat in the winter, in the fall, in the winter. I'm obviously fall and winter. I'm using it to heat the house. In the spring, it saves me tons of money, probably at least another couple hundred dollars. In plant starts that I don't have to buy for my yard. So tons. I mean seriously the savings are huge. I really do believe in this. If you can build a greenhouse and attach it to your house I highly recommend it. A greenhouse I've been trying to show everyone is a huge multitasker and it can save you a ton of money. And it can also help you get your independence so that you're not so dependent on you know the system with all of the um, you know gas, natural gas, propane, wood, whatever it is you heat your house with this can help lessen that. Um, and it can also help lessen the environmental impacts that those things cause. So again, I hope this video is helpful. Um, I really appreciate you watching, and thank you so much.